Yeah, that's. Uh, I think we should just get started, right? It's uh, seven yeah. o'clock now. I mean, uh, waiting for PC. Uh, and we, we don't even know when he's showing up, so we only have an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, so shall we just go through the divisions and start with Lucky Luck? Lucky Luck. Yeah, so which we talked about really shortly, they already played half the games. Oh, yeah, half the game. Crazy. I mean, they're f super far ahead. Um, so I think this is one uh, we can really look at the leaderboard um, and see what's going on. Actually, the next game is uh, going on as we speak. No, it's not. It's a water wall game. It's Hellboy's water wall game. Yeah. Um, but Hellboy is doing super well with his underworld team. But to be honest, it's I good. think when you guys did the precast, this was a little bit expected, wasn't it? Yeah, it's an interesting division. Um, Dark Elf doing well as well, but it's really mixed. And besides Hellboy, there's a lot of contenders still in play. Like, literally, almost everybody else can take second spot. Yeah, I mean, the vampires are probably off, but even FD, if he has a, a last um, three games winning... Um, he might take the second spot even here. Yeah, because we have the two, two, one, one. Ooh. And the average age just went up by ten years. And some chair noises. Do we need to mute him until he's actually ready? <laughs> Angry typing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, CB CJ. Everyone can make it with Underworld. It's too easy. Um, I mean, but... this division favors Underworld, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not a bad one. Let's uh, let's be honest. It's a good, it's a good shout. Um, and we played four games, seven points. It, it if it just gets all right results against the vampires. Then he missing FT and Blood Bear, so he got to choose game in as well. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, like Underworld do have a lot of advantages here in this division, especially with his um, choice of Skitter as a star player. Mm. Um, he gets the speed advantage over everybody but the Skaven, um, and he can keep the Skaven in check in this one. Um, so I think he has a good shot of... Yeah, um, but... going through, but I mean, Il Tempo Giant is um, doing pretty well. I think you guys picked um, Stobertus to to take the second spot. Yeah, with Hellboy. Yeah, or was it Il Tempo with Dark Elf? But both of those, like everybody, can get the second spot. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but what happened to Huanchi? I mean, yeah. Huanchi is really good, right? He he won Hellboy's New Year's tournament, and what did he do in this division? Um, it's Brett's is a bit, if you know, it's a little bit of weird race to play as well. I cannot remember his roster either. Let's take a uh, look. Rolex. It's the floating head. No, it's only for good first days. <laughs> I don't know how we play too. It's tough. In yeah, it's having a it's having a sleepover. Yeah, Gary, on your right. I mean, this is a like division with a lot of good coaches, and the um, racial um, diversity is quite nice and interesting. I mean, it's not a bash heavy um, division, um, and I mean, like what the Brets have going for them um, is normally uh, the Dauntless. And where can they really use the Dauntless here? I mean, against the Vampires, they might get a shot. Against the Lizards, they might get a shot. Um, but aside from them, their their key skills don't really help them. So I think um, Huanchi uh, was fighting an uphill battle here from the start, and that's where it led. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I picked Il Tempo Gigante, Gigante. I mean, I can't be sure. It was all a long time ago, and we did it over the course of about 15 hours. So Yeah, that was a, that was a mammoth stream. <laughs> next, next time we must take some notes. Um, but this, I mean, this one's still wide open. I mean, even Hellboy could feasibly still lose it from here yeah but he's got a pretty good run he also have he has um, the, the vampires and the two skaven left so he has a unpayable little bit of a soft ending 
So, but I mean, uh, Skaven uh, could could really be an issue for him, right? I mean, that's the of, only thing he's got going for against the other teams: his speed and the Skavens, of course. Yeah, um, can outspeed him. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, but it's 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 good again. Everybody can almost make it, besides probably seven and eight is gone. Yes, uh, playing for pride down there, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Rolex is saying that he won the uh, the Rava Bowl with two hundred coaches with Bretonians. Uh, did you happen to have Broken Galanti on the squad? <laughs> I cannot remember actually. Uh, no stars. No yeah. stars as well. Okay, well, well that's that's more impressive. Oh, that was back in Dolphar times. Okay, but uh, oh, a, f a free beer, right? Well, that probably helped. I mean, I don't think Bretonians are horrific. Um, no. why I'm gonna. I think knobs, knob humans are going to be slightly worse. Um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm waiting to play them, and we were never going to get Bretonians as was into uh, official games workshop designs. So, I think it's a reasonable compromise. Yeah. Should we move on to the next one? Absolutely. I don't know how much I missed because our dinner overran slightly. We just took a look at uh, Lucky Luck and um, they are game day ahead, basically. Right. Everybody else. So they already are in round five. Um, everybody else is in round four and some are even stuck in round three, I think. Yeah, yeah I think the next one is uh, Cindy Pie Whistle, which have uh, one game outstanding still from three. Wow. So this is an early one. I mean, Diem Lord was expected to do well. Um, the Halflings, yes. of course, trailing. Um, I mean, two good coaches with uh, Sikazex and Dionysian down there, but um, that was kind of to be expected, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of in two draws and a loss, uh, or indeed in one win and two losses. I think with Halflings, yeah, the problem it's going to be tricky. The problem was more the last draw was... Um was mainly him not being uh, bothering to actually, those two not bothering to actually try to get in that game. Okay. Let's throw a little bit shade at uh, none of them as much as tried to get in it for three and freaking weeks. Uh, right, wow. Hooray. Um, but I'm happy to course, see... You know, we do think Dion Lord is, uh, is probably going to do very well here, but of course uh, Dionysian with the flings did take a draw off him. And from what I heard, was only a, a seventy-five percent landing away from uh, the win. And then, of course, that landing failed. But yeah, very, very difficult to see anything other than Wolf and Diom Lord for me in this one. I mean, the Nurgle still have a game to play, and if they take it, um, they get ahead of Wolf Bark here. Um, yeah. Obviously, in the head-to-head, -head, um, if they haven't played yet, the Nurgle have it tough against the Dark Elves. I'd say. Mm. Um, and Wolfbark is a very strong coach, as we all know. So I agree with you there, but I wouldn't write off it the Nurgle. They played their uh, first round, and Wolf won 2-1. Ah, okay, yeah. But still, I mean, if especially if he's got that out of the picture, if he gets yeah, that's, um, ahead of yeah. him. Yeah, absolutely. No, and yeah, Siggy is still in it as well, like Arisha say, with the 1-1-1-1. Um, so that's all to play for still. Yes, but it's very hard to see um, the Flings or indeed uh, Mario Zagallo's um, team getting anywhere, isn't it? Yeah. It's a in this division, like the, the last three teams are like you can't hope for. Oh, for wait an a sec. No. Oh, and it was Wolfpack playing a bit with the Kent. Sorry, I looked at wrong. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So when does uh, Anton. Yeah, uh, okay. Oof, uh... Of course, a lot of pride at stake as well. I mean, I'm sure Sickers Eggs would love to get above Dionysian uh, in the final standings. I did play one one there, it does, and then would uh, get loot gripped. <laughs> but yeah, that's a. Uh, that's. I'll probably say the top, the top half, especially yes. if Anton prob. Should win that round, and if we win that round, then it's uh, the top four teams. I'll imagine taking it home. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think they're the ones that are in serious contention. But I mean, you know, surprises can happen certainly this early in, in it. As you said, there's still um, most of them still have four games to play, and, and one or two have five. So, yeah. I mean, if I had to make a bet here, I'd say the top three, basically, if the Nurgle win their last game. Um, Siggy might have a shot, um, but he would be the dark horse at this moment. If the Nurgle um, win, then I think it's two out of the top three. Um, Still struggling to, yeah, to see beyond Wolfbark and Diom Lord, but I mean, yeah. you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah, Siggy got um, DM Lord in last game. There could be a needing to win where DM Lord maybe don't need it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but it's two for a win and one for a draw, isn't it? So it's hard to get you know very far ahead. If if teams are drawing, they're not dropping as far back as in some other point systems. Yeah, I agree with Ori Lenses here, and that that's a, that's a problem at this point, and that's why I think it's almost done with the top. Two, like two, three, maybe four, and because it's really hard to see a major change in this division with the bottom three team being so far in the bottom, basically. Well, and I mean, everyone's just going to try and whoop on the flings, aren't they? That's yeah. um, you know, it's going to be really important that you get your win there. So, uh, you know, as we've seen, they've managed, uh, you know, Siki has managed to get a, a win, and Dio's managed to pull a couple of draws out. So, if they can take points off teams, that's going to really cost the teams. You know, those would be games they had down as wins at the start, isn't it? Um, Rolex, yeah, if you, yeah, you're on the list, as uh, as Core has already told you. It's Are you in Core's server? Because uh, if yeah. not, you'll certainly can get an invite there. Well, he is. So that's why he's on my list. <laughs> To farm six, yeah. <laughs> well, they're going to try to, but um, you know, he's he's got himself a win already, and you know, it, it, stunty teams can occasionally do nice things. And the thing is, he's got a chef, so like with a chef mm. in in the game, anything can happen. Like, I mean, even a strong team, zero rerolls is not easy to play with. Yes, yeah, no, it isn't. Um, it but really, really you... checks your turn ordering and prioritization. But if you a lot of the better teams and then division co compels in with either dodge or block or both, which is um, a bit of an issue for the zero reroll problem, it's a bit better against teams where there are not a lot of starting skills. Yes, rostered leaders are yeah, a reasonable self defense against the chef, aren't they? Yeah, and in general, that's like like Dark Elf, for example, that has a lot of blocks and dodge and 84 yeah, still absolutely. works well against. With zero rerolls, um, yes. you've got skills not... covering your lack of reroll ability. Yeah, and we have a dirty down. It's almost done with round four. Um, you only have a Makoto and a Vilenich, two of the dwarves needing to battle it out. And, yes, uh, they're, right, they're right down at the foot. I mean, it's a three dwarf division, isn't it? I mean, Chug's doing yeah. very well here with his Mister Tato is coming uh, team. I mean, two wins and two draws. That's very very solid. Again, a, a very strong field here. Yeah, we don't need to talk about number one. <laughs> well, it, it's a bit depressing, but I think we picked Volcajo as doing reasonably well here, didn't we? You didn't. You guys said, <laughs> oh, it's going to be the dwarves, it's going to be the humans. There's no chance for poor Amazon, for poor Skaven in this division. And look at what ha what's happening. We got Skaven in contention, we got Elven Union in contention. We even have Marzim's Amazon still in contention. Um, I mean, it's going to be tough, but... I'm pretty sure I didn't take it, your bus as humans to go anywhere. I can actually not remember what we ended with in this division. I think you guys both said it's going to be uh, Villainage and Chugs. Hey, well, I mean, uh, Chugs did manage to take a draw off the uh, the current point leader, so that's, uh, you know, my prediction. He is right up at the top there. <laughs> I gave it to that's, him. I, I handed it to him. I didn't want that. And the draw was fine there. Uh, I don't. I, 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 perhaps I liked Villainich's build, but um, certainly they haven't been effective so far. Even if he wins his game in hand, that's going to be uh, a very much a midfield grind. Whereas uh, you and Chugs obviously are going a little out of sight here. So the, the teams need to haul you back, and of course they're taking a lot of points off each other. So you played both. Yeah, two out of three dwarfs. 
So you're missing to play a Makoto's Dwarf, right? Yep, exactly. And the Frog Eaters. And who do you have last round? The Buzzers Humans. I'm actually more scared of the humans than yeah, uh, humans is a bit here actually. The combination, you're imagining the combination. That's a, that's both block and mighty blow and all sort of stuff to smash but up and scaven. Like this is basically an anti dwarf build um, with uh, Clard uh, as a roadblock to get some breathing space against them. Um, but the humans are pretty fast, so uh, they can just get around him or uh, just hunt yeah. down. Uh, things so I'm actually more worried about the humans than um, the dwarf. Well, of course, it's, it's the old school faster glart, isn't it? Yeah. Not big fat glart. Yeah, it's the good glart. And he can mm, dodge. I better like yeah, the fat, fat glart. You know, I don't like fat glart at all. I like fat glart. I like slow and steady wins the race. I particularly like the model. So I think that helps. <laughs> Well, this is also everything to play for, isn't it? I mean, yeah. um, even even Marzim's Amazons are not 100% done here, right? No, and if uh, Makoto wins his game here, he's, who, yeah, he's missing game four. So if he can beat Willenich, he's on yeah, five he points. Third, he leaves it. Yeah. So that's, it's a little bit like it's hard to see both you. One of the spots is probably going to you and Jogs. It's hard to see both of you drop out of top two. Yes. I mean, even if you, you know, played very safety minded and just got the draws in from here on in, and that's probably with, you know, with the amount of points everyone else seems to be taking off each other. Uh, but then there's no real whipping boy in this division. Uh, I mean, even Viljanic's dwarves, he may have uh, only got one draw and two losses so far. But, um, you know, I seem to recall the dwarves not being particularly badly built anywhere across TSD this season. So. They're certainly capable of, uh, of turning up mm. in any game and uh, doing damage to someone. No, all of these are very, very solid build. And to be honest with you, I diced the living crap out of Billy uh, in our game. <laughs> um, so um, I don't expect him to lose all of them because uh, three dicings, yes, but not seven dicings in a row. And yeah. then, of course, there's the morale issue. You know, if teams get to the point where they just can't qualify, are they playing hard or are they playing for fun? Or are they just putting the game in because they feel they should? I mean, if you look at this selection of coaches, I don't see anybody giving up. No. Like, it's, it's, it shouldn't it's because the whole the whole idea of it is the is it's more practice, it's more playing yeah, yeah. than it is actually the playoff. Yeah. So hopefully, most people are here because they want to play. Um, yeah. I mean, besides yeah. Marsen, but he's Scottish; he doesn't really count. Uh, <laughs> I think Scott Scotsmen's are known for giving up easily, right? No, I think you'll find that's the French. <laughs> they will just insult you a lot first. Um, <laughs> on the way. I got diced by Falk. Marsim says you yeah. diced him as well. Everybody is getting diced by me in this division. It's just a coincidence. 2-0. Absolutely with you, FD. I do think uh, flat, Fat Glart is the better Glart. I think that was a decent change. Yeah. Dice, dice, baby. I'm here for the ladies. <laughs> and Gary on is uh, warming up with uh, some hot TSD talk before his uh, cup game. Yeah, looking forward to that. Although, of course, uh, half the crowd will be watching Mr. Page, uh, who I believe is streaming his own game. So, uh, Art is streaming it, Page is streaming it, Seabros is streaming that game. Right, so three choices for it. And and then we get it. I think we probably get a carry on and a piece of copper for ourselves. Yeah, some nice dwarf on dwarf action. Follow to this one. Mm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's not chaos versus chaos. I'm fine. I mean, yeah. I hope PC is still looking forward uh, to that after his horrific dwarf on dwarf match last night. Yes, unfortunately that team's not been lucky. Um, then afterwards, I don't know if you stayed, we uh, we span into some Kislev, who I felt, I mean, he played quite well, um, but I, I felt I had a slight edge and failed a failed the literally the final roll of the game, a two-plus over the touchdown line to score and win, and that failed. And then today I span into some chaos, similarly gimped with three missing players. 
and he kept hitting with his loners, and he kept hitting and blitzing with his minotaur, but just refused to roll any one in nines. <laughs> and, uh, again, <laughs> I failed. Um, all the bad dice for the dwarves. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Week, I failed one in nine to get uh, my score in, and that failed. And then I failed two two pluses to score on his drive. And so mm-hmm. it was another draw. So I'm now at six five o, a six four o or six five o. It's six five o, and the team is just so unlucky. It's had so many awful games. But, can, but it's good to uh, transition into. You cannot say your goblins in TSD has been unlucky. I did watch one of those games where you absolutely slaughtered, and I hold say uh, poor poor dwarves. I can, because look, they've uh, they've done incredibly well, and yet they're they're not in contention. Uh, and they're about to get destroyed because uh, our next game is against Strider. Sure. Yep. And, uh, of course, because you um, decided to cheat and replace the goblin team in this division, because they should have been two goblins, uh, and replace them with dwarves, everyone has built an anti-goblin team, thinking they would get two nice easy wins against goblins. And instead, they're just putting all of that effort into beating me. So Strider will be destroying me Monday night, live on stream. Uh, I think we're going to be chatting as we do it, so that'll cheer me up as we go. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I've done all right so far. I mean, two wins and a draw is all right, isn't it? Yeah, but Troic and uh, Strider is still uh, striding away with uh, three wins Yes, each. I, Yeah, I, especially because, I mean, humans are such a good counter for goblins. Yep. Um, so, and Strider not exactly being the worst coach in the world. Um, no. Uh, will most fun. likely, I love you, PC, and I think you're great at Blood Bowl. <laughs> but you're, I don't like your chances in that one. Which no, would I wouldn't bring him any money on me if I were you. Yeah, uh, I also think, uh, those... much as I love Throwek, and I uh, whisper it quietly, I think, uh, given even races, I'm a, a slight favourite against him. I think Amazons are a pretty hard counter to Goblins, too. I yeah. think it's going to be a very tough game. <laughs> you mean just because it's uh, filled with blood, <laughs> blood Yeah, guard. it's because it's filled with blood, Dodge, and Guard. Um, and also, he's got Roxy, which means he can come and take my ball away any time he chooses. Or so, I think you want, to, to the two want. teams that are above me, there is abs- I don't think I have any chance of beating either. Yeah. Um, and that I, puts me in a very difficult position. Especially it's, if, like, if, if, if Torak in this round is playing ever, um, if he doesn't lose that game, it's hard seeing anybody getting yeah. back on those two, I think. Yeah. I mean, with those, those two top coaches with hard counters against Goblins still having to play. Um, the goblins that gives them pretty much four wins in the bank. Um, I don't see anybody getting past them. No, I mean I I have to say I thought I felt a little unlucky to only draw against Ever. Um, I felt I was slightly on top in that match. Though I mean as goblins, you know you've got to be so lucky to even be in contention in any match. Hmm. Um, but I had some shots to win it that just didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I mean I'm sure he would say you know I was incredibly lucky. But um, you know we've beaten Podge Podge, uh, Poi Poi. Uh, and I've also beaten the uh, the dwarves down <laughs> yep. the bottom. I think it was. No, I've beaten right the Arrow Holt. Um, so I've still got to face the um, the Underwhelm and Flicky. Uh, and I don't think Flicky's yet to actually finish a game, is he? I have no clue. I mean, Did I, he concede? I've, yeah, I've, he's conceded twice. I've caught two of his games. Um, yeah. And in in I mean, it's, you know, he gets to a position where it's just not going to happen. And I don't think he's enjoying Kislev. Uh, against no, the human, he didn't concede. I just checked his match history. Okay. But it's fine, and it's like we can take it here. Like, there's no rules against not conceding, and we don't have tiebreakers. Head to head is the it, only tiebreaker, so it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's like a NAF game. If it's if it's beyond you, and you're not enjoying, you know, sitting there for the next 25 okay. minutes, then why sit there for the next 25 minutes? If the game is done, if the other coach has won. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was a slaughter party. That was, uh, yes, it, that was it, something I mean, I, else. I got some very nice dice, Arna. I mean, and that has to be confessed. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, that was a show. Let's, uh, and then at half time, I, I stopped even doing good things and I started moving some terrible things. And, uh, and yet it still all worked. So, yeah, um, that went. And then uh, we got very, very lucky against Poi Poi. And he just stopped him. Uh, but we did, so we managed a 1-0 there. And as I said, I, I felt... I mean, that I felt very lucky to get the win in. Whereas I felt a little unlucky uh, against Ever. But, um, you know, these things happen. Uh, and yeah, I, don't, I still don't see anyone stopping Strider and Throek. I think they're uh, they're going to dominate this No, division. that's that's like... I can see potentially Ever has a way in if he beats Throek. 
Yes, I think Throex the one that's at risk um, because also I think Strider is just one of the finest pound for pound coaches money can buy. So um, I, I just don't see there's there's anything that will stop Strider. I think we said that in the preview. I think Throex a reasonably strong favourite for second. Yeah, um, but he does have Strider in last round. So if he loses yeah, ever now, like uh, but I think he has to lose this round now to not stride away with Strider. Yes, and Strider's. I mean, as we said, I think Strider's going to get a win against me uh, unless and there's pretty much... simply extraordinary dice. And obviously, you know, no fun toys like Doom Divers or anything like that for me. So it's uh, it's very very tough. Shall we move on to the next one? Yep. Yeah. I'm already there. Am I? So it's uh, the double fling division. Well, we um, we got again. We got our mankins running away in the top with uh, three wins yeah. for the bone collectors. Me, is did we? Uh, right. I think we uh, pretty Jim, much hello. predicted that mankins would do well here. Certainly, I think I did. I think you uh, guys had mankins and Elliot. Um, yeah, I mean, I liked Elliot because I saw his vampire run uh, in the CCL, and I thought uh, with that with, he was really in the vampire zone. And he could get some stuff done. But so far, he's letting me down a little bit there. I think we also picked that both uh, Harty and D for Dan might do okay. Yeah. Um, but the real surprise to me is Scab44, who I didn't know. And so far, is doing a really good job. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's uh, the second season now. Um, um, besides this, I didn't know much to him either when he joined. But yeah, he's doing well with the the dwarf and looks really comfortable there. Um, did we have? We do have. Um, I've, so Mayhem's uh, PC. He said if you burn down just before the deadline, or oh, in the, not uh, burn down, he knew he couldn't replace it before the deadline. Was that that round or was that the one? That was uh, so we did um, we did just call that game because he didn't think he will be ready to play, so that game needs to be played again sometime over the last rounds. Um, Scab versus Mayhem's. Uh, okay, so Scab is basically so um, if they play one, potentially yeah. it it could easily still be a win, but in theory they should play that one because they didn't get to play. It. If they have time, oh. and it depends if they can find time to play it. I know Mahomes is struggling a bit with Blood Bowl, so let's see. Yes, he's got that um, one of those people that arrived full of sort of confidence and verve, and I want my own league, and I'm going to stream, and I'm going to love Blood Bowl. And the problem with that is very often that uh, that confidence meets a wall of Blood Bowl, and Blood Bowl really often wins because it's the wall in that scenario. Uh, I wish him luck. It's, uh, you know, find your inner love for Blood Bowl again. It is out there. Yeah. But Blood Bowl is a vicious taskmaster. I mean, Store still has a shot here, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's still... Yes, uh, but... His problem is a bit, again, what he's... I think what he's missing to play. Got Mankins now, then he got the Flings, which is fine. But then he got Scab and his dwarves has been doing well and he got Elliot. Well, maybe it's not too bad actually. I don't think it's not a like he still has a shot. I mean imagine the but To be fair, everybody everybody has probably a shot at that second space right now. Yeah, yeah I think so too. I mean Yeah. Like if the if the flings steal all the vampires rerolls, I don't think the vampires in such a good spot, aren't they? No. No. Um, yes, that, that would be very, very difficult for Elliot. Um, I mean, I think at this point Elliot needed to get some of the early wins in, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if he suddenly gets a few good results. I think Mayhem's is struggling with his Blood Bowl and his computers and things, so I think we're probably not going to see um, see him surprise the, the leading pack, and I think Dragon Loop's out of it. But from store upwards... So if um, you ask me, I would, I would pick Harty builds. here. Mm. I would pick Harty. Uh, Bretonians with Griff is a good build. Yep. Um, I have played Hardy on, on Fumble. He's a fantastic coach. He is. Um, so I can see <laughs> him really coming in here. Yes, I mean, I, I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. D for Dan, I, I know reasonably well, and um, I've you know, seen him at a few tabletop tournaments. He's a very experienced coach too. 
So, yes, lots of things could happen here. A little early to be certain. But Mankis probably has a good shot. Mankis is definitely in the the, you know, the, the bull seat. Yeah, it's hard to see it's two people moving past him. That's the thing again. Even if he goes down a, a gear, it's still hard to see two people racing past it. You do need to still keep putting the points in, but even draws at this point is, you know... Yeah, just don't lose. Yeah, yeah, just don't lose, absolutely. And next... Runt at the third. Yeah. Now, Garion is uh, is dominating this, but uh, other than that, no one seems to be that interested uh, in either playing their games or in um, or in getting points on the board. Get your bloody games in, people! What's wrong with you? Okay, so there's there's two things here. Me and Zebra has been postponing our game twice to do cup games instead <laughs> because we've been planning exactly we've been planning to play the last two first days and then ended up i've been ending up doing cup games instead so we're playing in the weekend i, I hear you know the person that uh, sorts out all the discipline issues so it's probably going to be all right isn't it <laughs> the brown is first day, the deadline is first day monday anyway so we're still fine uh sure. le brett miles is uh, substituted in uh, tom snizzle so we had a we had a need to sub sub, sub him in for what was that? Uh, Hagrim. Um right. So that's where he, it was last in the round. So that's why that game first is getting played in the weekend. Oh, okay. Because okay. he could get in and actually play round three instead of getting uh, Asad uh, a walkover. Yeah. Well, that's going to be interesting. Um... But like the the match between you and Seabra is a pretty big one already, right? Yep. So whoever wins this, yeah. If I can, if Seabra, if if Seabra loses that, he's probably out. Yeah. I mean, still four more rounds to come. I mean, if he puts four wins on, that could yeah. still see him in contention. Um, but yes, if he loses it, you do think he's in a very tough spot. Um, but you're not in a great spot if you lose it yourself. Nope. Nicole. But to uh, be we're fair, already in the first two, that's uh, not ideal. But then no one, as I said, other than uh, than Gary on with his hundred percent start. There's a lot of teams again taking points off each other here. No one seems yep. to be wanting to put much of a marker down so far. Gary on obviously proving that the very boring undead build uh, is actually a good one. Undead are pretty good. What a surprise! Not sure that's a news flash for anybody, but yes. But he built them. Did he build them correctly? Do you do two guard whites? Is yes. that normal? That is yeah. the right way to do it. If you if you give if you give your mom, mommies anything but block, you're going to listen to me being annoyed for at least fifteen minutes. <laughs> Telling you why it's yep. wrong. So Gary on that's probably that. even more proof that undead are indeed very good. If you've never played them and get three O and O in this division, it probably means that Undead are reasonably good. <laughs> but Undead is pretty good. It's basically, they, it's like the exact same. This is the team value where they're good at. Um, yes, there's a reason that in every rule set they've been right up at the top for uh, for tournament play. And nobody's ever changing that. Why should not they? so far. Everyone talks about uh, you know, Dorfs being dominant in the next rule set. I still see a lot of harsh, harsh a lot of harsh everyone. Um, primarily, uh, at least one streamer. Yeah, shouting. but but that's that's about it. Like I think Undead are still at the very top, especially for tournament play. Um, I, I don't see anything past them. Lizards are still good, yes, but. I don't see dwarfs up there. What like why are dwarfs no, they, better all of us? I mean we're not talking term and play when they're talking, they're talking about redrafting play and seasonal play. Where dwarf is definitely fine because there's no claw palm and they they're reasonable cheap, so they're easy to redraft. It's it's fine. But tournament play they're still a bit slow and shit. Which is yeah, their main problem. Right. It's hard for them to win six games. Yeah, nothing's made up for that. And no nothing like that's why, no matter what we do with them, they're still. Yep. 
I mean, I flatter myself I'm not bad with them, and I think the best I've done in a tournament, a six-game tournament, is 5-2-1. I have managed to 3 0 nil with them, but I mean, that just won't cut it if it's in a big tournament. You know, something will go 6 double o. And usually it's more like 4 2 0 or 4 one one because yeah, usually someone so will hard. break into your cage and steal your ball. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's, and the speed just makes it really, really hard. Amazon's has yeah. a bit the same issue for tournaments. Yeah, any uh, reversal, it's very, very hard to um, then get back on top of the game. So, so besides, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Garyon will uh, stay up top and then whoever gets the second spot is going to be somebody. I think well, like the winner of UNC Brawl has a very good shot. Yeah, Solreth isn't a terrible coach. I could see... <sighs> he's missing but, one I mean, skill is hard. He's missing oh. skill, isn't he? It is, yeah. It is a it's, tough disadvantage. I mean, at this level of coaching, which we see in TSD, and like every game I've played was um, was a well-coached one. Every game I watched was a good one. This, I mean, this is my first TSD. Mm. Uh, and I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, it's such good high-level practice. I mean, in CCL, you can grind your 100 games down and get like 80 shitters. 30 of them will dice you. Um, and like, this is just high level tournament play and such good practice so that one skill is crucial most likely yes i mean i, I tend to agree i think it is in the over the, the course of a season i think it's going to limit too much um, but you never know it's rad plus he's gone with a roger which it's always know, he, fun. Loves, he loves his rogers <laughs> yeah to be fair like so yeah Anybody can find my games against me. Let's put it away. I was uh, I was down players trying to drive against the game, and it was uh, quite interesting. That's uh, that's not what you want against game. No, that really isn't what you want. <laughs> Village, I didn't dice the entire division. I only diced Poncho in the first game. Yes, I diced you. So fifty percent of your games. I did dice Marism. Yes, that's fair. And against Chucks, I didn't have any Kaz against me as rats. So. You might Pretty call good. that a dicing as well, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So you, three of the four is, yeah. Okay, I think we're there, aren't we? Uh, you did, Joffrey, and they did that even before I came on, so that was uh, pre-7 o'clock. No, it was 7 o'clock. You, you are fashionably, you normally 5, 10 minutes fashionable. Though. Yes, I normally am, but uh, my daughter's kicking off tonight. But uh, it will be in the wild. You can just uh, pop the wild on and uh, watch it back. And to be fair, lucky look, they are jumping ahead in game days. Yeah. So they've played four rounds already, so we might as well cover them early since they tend to play early. Yep. <laughs> makes some sense. And uh, we got uh, in a scroll hand. We got a double nose in the moment. Do you, do you want another go at that again, Cor? No. Are, are you quite happy with how that came out? I'm happy butchering every names. Oh, this is a tough one. This is very, very tough. Um, I mean, I, I'm quite impressed with the fear, to be honest. Uh, he's a lovely chap, and he's been running the uh, the fumble offshoot of TSD. And I think even he would tell you that whilst he loves his Blood Bowl, he's not that brilliant to coach. And, and there he is right up in second place in a very, very strong field. And he also, so, um, he has uh, his uh, periods of uh, hating Blood He's a bit in the same. He has his love-hate relationship. Going, uh, going as well. Good. Um, but it's really good. Two wins and a loss is not bad. Um, I mean, this is this is going to be tough for Arioso, I think, because if you look at the top races, those are the ones vampires probably struggle against. I mean, against the Nurgle, they should be fine, but the Nurgle are in the bottom anyway, so. That's not where you're going to steal the the important. Yes, but this points. this is a this is a non-vampire vampire team, if you remember. It ah, true. Vampires. It's it's, it's a fascinating vampire build without any vampires. So uh, it's brilliant. It's Cheney and the Count and lots of thralls. I, I remember watching that and just laughing. And it's a um, famous Timmy G's uh, non-apo uh, chop team as well in this division. Yes, Dimmy, who uh, who built himself a lovely team and thought, oh, I'm out of a 13th Hobgoblin, and completely forgot he hadn't had an Apothecary. Um, now, that's going to be fine, as actually in this division, there isn't that much to bang him out, is there? The Norse can always go, go Norsing. 
Yes, the Norse can, and of course the dwarfs will try to, but I, I mean, there isn't anything hugely monster, uh, particularly with any claw wielders that could really take a couple of chorfs off the field. So he might get away with it more games than he doesn't. Um, but it is but so yeah, funny. Sorry, V. Do you guys know the Nutty Fesser as a coach? Not really. Not really, no. Because unless he's a god, I think the first three might keep it between them. He is in third. Ah, I'm looking at the at the stupid client. Right. Yeah. So we got uh, three teams, at, oh, four teams with four points, and two teams with three points after. Yeah, it's I mean, it's so... it's just the two Nurg the Nurgle teams are not getting anywhere. Oh, there's a yes, there's a prediction. Um, I mean, Anubis technically you can't say he's out of it, but <laughs> yes, I agree. The Nurgles are doomed here. Um, I will and probably just about anyone else. I mean, I still think Velihopia is going to be tough to stop. Uh, I think Largo is a, a very good coach. I will. Uh, I will put put it out there. I will still be surprised if the top two is not between the top four now. Yes, I I tend to agree. Um, the reason I'm not mentioning the fear is, you know, as we've said, he's he perhaps wouldn't put himself up in the very top company. Um, I I haven't seen him play enough to know for sure, but I have heard him say that a lot. Uh, and as you said, he is falling in and out of uh, blood bowl love a bit. Um, but yeah, no, there's it's it's wide open. It, absolutely, you could tell, you could sell me any of those six, and there's a reason why. Oh no, sorry, five because I don't want to include Dimmy. I'm going to um, go with four because the, yeah. the vampire build is just too hard to like consistently score here in this one. It's a hilarious build, but yeah. It's a hilarious one, yes. It, it, I'm not sure it's uber competitive, but then TSD doesn't have to be, as Cor said. It's, it's as much about keeping your hand in with NAF, practicing against some of the very top coaches, um, which is, you know, it's, it's great. It's uh, Not everything has to be all about the win every single time you take the pitch. Um. Yeah, top four is probably my guess. Yeah, top four, and it could be, and uh, top four, and Billy's taking one of them, and whoever goes with him, I have no clue. Probably, so I'd, I'd be to put somebody down on Velihopia. Yeah, I mean, one of the two Norse teams is not gonna last. Yeah, <laughs> like to to have seven games where your Norse don't break down is tough. Who does Lago has left? Lago the Nubis. I will say and Billy and Timothy. I, 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 pretty, I think we did say, did we end up with Largo and Belly? I think we may have. I, yeah, I don't recall, to be honest. It was, <laughs> it was eight hours of uh, talking anyway. Largo's build is also really nice for this division. Mm. I took a look. It's four guard um, and a mighty blow and a blitzer. Um, I really like it on this one. I mean, it's going to be tough for him if he moves on in playoffs. Um, no tackle, no frenzy, uh, nothing of the like. So he might have it tough. Frenzy if he comes no up against Elf. No, tackle is overrated in F style. We but have he doesn't a... have frenzy. Frenzy is both. Of... Yeah. Says the inveterate dwarf and lizard coach, and <laughs> So, I mean, I, I still think that's misinformation you're putting about because you love facing teams without tackle. Um, uh, yeah, my, my undead team doesn't have tackle. When we, uh, when we, yes, but you have a lot of wrestle. No, um, I've got when we one. went through, you were continuously bad-mouthing everything with tackle. But in a lot of the divisions, there are, I mean, in my division, there's Amazons, lots of dodgy Kislev, <laughs> and they think two goblins, and Underworld. So <laughs> lots of reasons I think a tackle is going to... This is a bit different because we know what you're going to play. We yeah. are talking more in general terms. The problem taking tackle in general big math tournaments is that it's quite likely you're not really going to meet any blood for six games. There's, there's going to be some games where you don't meet it. But then if you're... I mean, I would still stand by. If you think you might end up at the top end of the competition, you need to be building something you believe is going to be effective against exactly. Wood Elves and Dark Elves and the but Ghouls of Undead. Uh -huh. uh, now... Tackle is an answer, but wrestle is another answer. I mean, and can you look at Largo's... Being in the right spaces is another answer, but even in the right spaces, you know, an elf with agility four can just dodge through, keeping to rely on that inbuilt reroll. Cool. Can you look at Largo's team right now? Yeah, it's God, 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 God. Yeah. I mean, what does he have to stop an elf team? 
you, you, the thing is, the elf team, like the wood elf team, you don't. It's not the blood gels. What you do is you keep hitting the stuff that's not blood, which means yeah. that the war dancers is there alone, which is not really useful for anything. That's the whole I mean, thing. I, I, it's I, it's you against elves and Amazons. You're not hunting the bludgers. You're hunting the stuff that doesn't bludge. Yeah, I don't disagree. And there's a lot of teams I would not try and put a tackler on. Uh, I would I mean, probably, here, depending I'm, on the division, I might. But with Amazons, I would never think a tackler would be something I would put yeah. money on. I might have a wrestler instead, a Rog, yeah, uh, line woman um, yeah. to deal with anything that I really need to get down. That's bludge. And and um, to be fair. I might take a mighty blow if I felt I needed to chip pieces, but again, I'd be after the non-dodge pieces to do that. And and actually, exactly, humans with where you can take tackle and mighty blow is potentially one of the teams I will take tackle on. Because yes, there's, of course, they also can often sleep on a, a tackle mighty blow, which yeah. can be very useful to them because it, elves are their base. Because there's no rules without, <laughs> there's no rules without, like, yeah. There's no set yeah, rules without blood exception. Blood. Absolutely. Yeah, exception. But, like, um, on, I've... I've don't think you can afford taking a tackle right, wide and on that, for example, when you no. only have five skillers. No, I think you need three on the ghouls, and the whites should probably both be guard. If you really want to go bashy, you can take one guard, one mighty blow, but you've got mighty blow on, on the mummies to try and you know get you yeah. up in numbers. Um, I think two guard is the right and, way to go, though. And, for example, Wood Elf Warn Answers is one of the few skills where I think it player pieces where it makes absolute sense taking tackle on one. So you have the combination of strip ball tackle for the if people should have your hands dodge. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, no rules so without to exception. To, end, to bring this to an end, I'm going with Valley and Largo in this one, but I'm gonna predict a playoff loss for Largo straight away because he's gonna get elves, and I just want my point to be proven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, just personally, I. I, yeah, I will imagine it means four guard mommy or uh, two guard mommies. I just find mommy skills slightly wasted against anybody good. Yeah, um, you should be able to isolate the mummy, and even if it hits a piece and gets it off the field, it shouldn't be in the first couple of turns, and that should be enough time to get them uh, marginalised to the point where they're not really part of what is mostly going on. But I also know Italian blood ball is slightly different than uh, UK blood ball. Um, uh, it's definitely some style style classes. And finally, the last division. Salad de Sant. <laughs> Brighter than dim, leading the way. Uh, I wonder what that's a reference to. <laughs> but he did take a draw in this round against uh, Fanchester United. Yep. Um, they signed uh, Wilhelm Wolf, I think. Um, and tr um, up it's and we have the tr trauma is playing right now against uh, the lizard in the middle. The two uh, four versus five is playing currently. That's a lot of draws here. It's another <laughs> very tough one to pick, isn't it? Lots of uh, lots of teams in the pack on this one. I mean, Ori is really good. Yeah. And Again, and playing undead, probably built correctly. So, yeah, it's a nice build. He's got a skelly. I got two. Skelly. And I normally have two. Yes, I mean, I, I don't hate skellingtons as much as some people do. They um, they give you that extra speed, uh, particularly if you are facing any claw, which is less common on uh, tabletop. Um, then they're, they're, I would suggest, better than zombies because of the thick skull. But actually, AV7, thick skull, and AV8, it's not as clear-cut that AV8 is miles better. Nope. And um, the extra movement. A bit better, but the extra movement, I think, can compensate for that. I'm not sure I'd want to team all of skeletons. No, we can leave that to, to another streamer. Um, <laughs> yes. But but I, I personally like having two for those, just for the extra speed when you need it. If you need to advance faster, um, so you can I mean, feel I, I two mean, of them. The only surprise is here, really, is uh, I mean, I thought this was a very, very strong division. Uh, Nîmes Le Ancien has been a, a beaten finalist in TSD, mm -hmm. um, so to see him down the bottom is a big surprise to me. Bazakistine, I know from personal experience, is an extremely talented coach. 
Uh, I know he's very new on Chaos Dwarves. That's uh, yeah, perhaps the issue there. And it potentially, it's not great division for Chaos either, is it? No, and no. Chaos aren't great in NAF anyway. Uh, yeah. Terrific. Um, I uh, have never played, him. never played Terrific. And he doesn't uh, like <laughs> But um, he's, uh, he's reportedly a very good coach. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not, not sure he's a fan player, of. But, uh, I'm not he sure he's found out, but I always say I've never played him. Um, so again, a race that he doesn't particularly love, isn't it? He's on uh, what's that? Burt's. Oh, Burt's, right? Yeah, and he's uh, he's not he's not he's not been that happy with that. Not enjoying them, yes. <laughs> so I'm really surprised to see the three that are down at the bottom. Uh, I don't know Jashe, um, but I've uh, I, I know of Tromstund. And uh, Gary Coleman and CJ Blackburn is a very experienced, very good coach. And of course, Aurelensis is uh, top quality too. So it's a very, very strong field. So when I say I'm surprised that the three that are down the bottom are down the bottom, someone has to be. Um, and what I'm not surprised is that there's a lot of teams taking points off each other. So far, apart from Aurelensis, he's, uh, he's coaching a blinder. Yeah, and I mean, if, if Tromstone gets to win right now, um, it's going to be the top three, isn't it? Yeah, probably. I mean, probably two of those three. Yes. Yeah, and uh, CJ is playing uh, Daza in this round. So if that's a I win, mean, CJ is up, up with uh, Ori. But the same could be true. It's true of Jashay. I mean, Jashay yeah, is if, uh, you know, he's on Lizards, isn't it? Which is a very yeah. strong team in the NAF style. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a key match. But people do need to start putting some wins in, or else Oriolensis is just going to you know accelerate out of sight. And as uh, Cor just said, if CJ puts another win in again. Then it looks very difficult to see how those two get stopped. Yeah, that's the, even if who was it? Gary on is his first really go at it on that, but in this format, that just good. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you if you played a lot of other races and know what to do with them, you kind of know how to play undead well. I think. Well, I mean, Undead are a hybrid. They've got, you know, and they're a standard hybrid team. So if you've played anything that isn't, you know, 100% one way or the other, then, yeah, yeah. you're going to have a reasonable idea what to do with them. And even if it's just from having coached against them, you're going to know what they do well and what they don't do well. I think good Blood Boulder skills translate across almost all of the races. Um, there are a couple that have such individual wrinkles that you really need to know what you're doing with that specific race. But the vast majority of races are, the coaching skills are more similar than people give credit to often. Yeah, I mean, probably the, the biggest exceptions being goblins and vampires. Um, I think halflings also. There's a style thing there that if you really don't get it, uh, that can be tricky. But I'd agree. Uh, ogres are also another one, maybe. Um, and then Kislev Slan, uh, whichever you want to call them. Again, I think uh, if you're not super experienced with them, uh, and if you perhaps only face them a couple of times because they are fairly rare in some formats, then um, yeah, that can be a real challenge to get your head around to. I mean, Kislev, it's so tempting to build them wrong, I think. Like, it's so tempting to just go, oh, I can leap in cages with multiple guys. Well, I'm going to give guard to everybody, guard and tackle or something. But it's not the greatest. <laughs> 